Let's get started on the basics of Autodesk Inventor. We're going to create this part right here. We're going to learn to use sketches. We're going to dimension those sketches. We're going to use, learn to use trim. We're going to extrude that sketch to make a part. We're going to create a hole two different ways using both extrude and the hole command. We're going to create fillets. And then we're going to go back and we're going to edit a sketch in order to change our finished part. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to open up a new document. We're going to go to New. And under Templates, we're going to want to make sure we've got Metric selected. And we're going to move over to Standard Millimeters. And then left click on Create. It brings us into Inventor itself. Now, right now, we are in the 3D model panel. And this is where you would uh, adjust 3D shapes. But we're not ready for that yet. So let's start off in the sketch so we can create those 3D pieces. Sketch is going to be a lot like AutoCAD. This is a two-dimensional drawing, which we are going to use to turn into a 3D model. But let's start off with Start 2D Sketch. It brings up my axes, and I have to decide which one I want to write, draw in. I usually pick this XY plane right here, and it switches to a flat view. As I'm looking up here, you're going to see a bunch of 2D sketch options here. This looks a lot like it does in AutoCAD. So let's start off with a, we're going to start with a line. So I'm going to start somewhere around here. Now right now we're just going to draw a rough shape, approximately what we're looking for. So we're going to go that way. I'm going to go straight up. If you'll notice, there is a perpendicular symbol. I'm going straight up with that line, 90 degrees. I'm going to go over, scroll wheel to zoom out again. I want to make sure that I've got that perpendicular symbol on the far right hand side. There is a parallel symbol down in the center. I click that. I'm going to go straight up again looking for that perpendicular symbol. And then I'm going to go over. Now I want this to line up perfectly with that other line. I'm keeping it perpendicular, but you notice how that little line pops up there? That means I've got it even with the bottom. Click, and then go straight down, and wait until it clicks on like that. Bang, I've got my first shape. Now it's roughly the size I want, but it is not exactly the right shape. Now if you need to zoom in or out, you can do that with the scroll wheel. If you want to, or you can use the zoom buttons here. If you want to move it around on your screen, you can either click the hand, and move it until you're happy with it. I can hit escape to get out of the pan command. Or if I click and hold the scroll wheel, it automatically puts me into the pan command too. All right. So I got the basic shape, but I don't have it the sizes I want. I can add those sizes afterwards with a dimension. So I'm going to click on the dimension, and I'm going to start putting dimensions in. So I want to click on this line at the bottom. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it down. It starts putting a dimension in. Now, right now it's at 21.4 and a whole bunch of decimals, but that's not what I want. I want to make this 100 millimeters. I don't have to type in millimeters because I'm already in the millimeters units. It automatically does it in millimeters for me. Hit enter. Oh, yeah, it's much bigger than the screen. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse. And now I've got a 100 millimeter piece right here. Let's uh, take this edge. Let's also make that one 100 millimeters. Oh, expands it out. Play with the scroll wheel until I've got what I want. This piece right here, that's too tall for what I'm looking for. I'm going to dimension that one as well. Let's only make that one 15 millimeters. 15 and enter. And this up here should be 15 millimeters as well. So I'm going to. Click on the center mouse button, move it like that. Dimension. See how that whole line lights up right there? And I've selected that. I'm going to go up. And I'm going to type in 15. If I need to change something, 
I can double click on a number and I can edit that dimension. So if I needed 20, that's very easy to do and that changes. But I don't want 20, so I'm gonna go back to 20, put it back to 15, and I've got that shape. Now I do actually want another piece on the top. And it would make sense to have drawn it right off the bat, but I want to show you a couple other things. So I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to draw it from this point. And I'm just going to make it approximately the right size. And then I'm going to dimension that. So what I need is I need to dimension from this edge to this edge. I'm going to put that up there. And I want that piece to be 65 millimeters long. Type in 65. I'm going to mention this piece. I want that to be 15 millimeters long. Type in a 15, and now I have it dimensioned. I'm going to extrude this as one big piece, so right now this line in between is in the way. So I'll go up here to the trim command. And if I click on that, you notice how it turns to dotted lines and it will trim that off. Now it's yelling at me because I've got this dimension here that is not quite working right, so I'm gonna hit escape, get out of the trim command. I'm gonna delete that dimension. Let's try trimming that one more time. Perfect. Program didn't like it because it was trying to measure from something I was trimming off. Now I still wanna make sure that this piece is 15 millimeters. I'm gonna hit the dimension command. Click on both of those, bring up my dimension to make sure it is still 15 millimeters. It is, I'm not going to change anything. Now I've got my sketch, the basic shape of the part that I want to create. Now I can't just go over here, click on 3D model and start working from there. You'll notice most of the commands are grayed out. I actually need to finish my sketch first. And it brings me back to a 3D model. Remember, if you are having trouble with the view, if you click on the home button, it automatically zooms out and centers your drawing in your screen. All right, now that I've got my sketch, I want to turn it into a 3D model. In order to do that, I'm going to extrude it. If I click the extrude, you'll notice how it automatically picked uh, the profile that I wanted. If not, you would just have to click on the parts you want to extrude. Now let's go through some of the settings here in Extrude that we've got. We've got directions. We've got forward. We've got back the other way. We can go centered on our uh, sketch and go each way. We, can, we have got uh, an asymmetric one where it can go some one way and a different amount the other way. Let's go with this basic one. That's what I'm looking for right there. I'm not going to worry about some of the advanced properties. But what I need to do here is I need to set my distance. Now I want to extrude this. I'm going to change the number. I want to extrude it 40 millimeters. Yeah, that's about the size I'm looking for. Hit OK. I've got my basic shape now, but we're still going to keep modifying that to change its properties, to change what it looks like, to add extra features. Let's start with the fillet command. If I go up here to a fillet, it brings up this window. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the edges I want to fillet. And I'm going to go with this corner, that corner. That's a really tiny fillet. A fillet is essentially rounding it off. If I want to change that. I can go over here where it says a two millimeter radius. I'm going to change that. Instead of two millimeters, let's do a five millimeter radius. No, 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 let's go up to 10. That looks about right. All right, apply, and then cancel, get out of the fillet. I now have that radius right there. Let's do another fillet down below. This one I'm going to do differently. So I'm going to pick this fillet, this edge, and this edge. Now you notice it remembers the radius I used last time. That's great, except I want to actually round that whole thing off. 
My whole part had a width of 40, so if I do a 20 millimeter radius fillet, that actually creates a full round right there. I'm going to apply, and then I can X this out. Now I've got my basic shapes. If I want to change my views, I can grab onto this box, and I can either click different sections of it to view it from different angles, or I can click it and rotate. I've left clicked and I've rotated. I need to get back to my original view that I was looking from. I can hit the home button and it automatically zooms out. If it's not fine enough for you, I can click the free orbit button here. It brings up this circle. From the center here, if I click in here and move my cursor, it rotates and gives me lots of options. Back home for a minute. I'm using the free orbit command. I click outside of that circle. It rotates it only on a single axis. Once again, I've got the pan, which I can also use by clicking on my mouse button and holding it. All right, let's put a couple of holes in this. Now I'm going to use two different methods to put holes in. First one, I'm going to use a sketch and extrude it. So I'm going to start a new sketch. So anytime we want to add another feature, we're going to start with another sketch. Now this time it didn't pop up my axes because I've got some faces. I want to create a sketch on this face right here. I'm going to click on that. Now it automatically flips it to perpendicular to that face. If it's not super easy to see or to access what you want to do, Feel free to change your views around until you've got what you need. I'm going to hit the home button because I like this better. I'm going to zoom in because this is the part that I'm working with. I'm going to click on the circle command. We're going to go to a center point circle. I'm going to want it on this face. But I want it to center in this circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move my cursor until it highlights the edge of this curve. And you notice how that center point shows up on my screen. I can now go there. Oh, I lost it. I'm going to try it again. I can now click right in that center point. And I know that this circle is now centered inside that outside fillet. Draw a circle there. Then I'm going to go in afterwards. I'm going to click the dimension and I'm going to give it a size. Bring it, drag it out here, someplace where I can see it easily. I want a diameter of 15 millimeters. Hit enter. I now have a 15 diameter circle. Okay, I'm going to finish that sketch. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. Let's use the extrude function to cut that into a hole. If I click extrude, now it remembers the sketch I was on. Great. Right now it's trying to create a peg. I don't want a peg. You'll notice now that we are doing a second extrude in this same document that we've got more options now. I can join, which means I would be creating this and attaching it to the old solid. I've got an option of cutting. And when I do that, it cuts a hole into the solid. Uh, intersect and new solid, we'll touch on those more later. But I do want to cut. So when I click on cut, if I roll this around a little bit, it wants to cut, it cut, but it only cut it 10 millimeters through. That's not all the way. I want, I want a hole all the way through. A couple ways I can do it. I can just put a bigger number in here. I know my thickness is 15, so I type in 15, it'll cut all the way through. I like this one right here where it just cuts through all. Or this one will cut to the next face. This one will cut to the next face as well. Let's cut all the way through. Hit OK. If I zoom in, I can see that I have a hole all the way through that part. That's not the only way to cut a hole. I'm going to put another hole up here, but this time I'm going to use the actual hole command. Now, there's a lot of options in there for creating um, chamfers, for creating countersinks. It's got some tools in it. But in order to use the hole command, it has to have a point to start from. 
So I'm going to use a sketch to create another point. So I'm going to create a sketch, and this time I'm going to put it up on this top face. I'm going to adjust the orbit just a little bit, just so I can see it better. And so it's in the center of the screen and zoom in. Now I'm going to put that hole, that point on here. I'm going to put this hole on. Now I'm going to need to reference these edges so I know exactly where to put it. So I'm going to use a command called project geometry. Because right now inside the sketch, this sketch is empty. All of these extra parts are not actually in there. If I click on project geometry and I click on this face, Notice how the edge all highlights yellow? Now inside this sketch, I've got all of that geometry. I've got these edges, I've got these fillets, I've even got the centers of where those fillets are. But let's create a point for our hole. So right here, I'm just gonna create a single point. I'm gonna put it there because it's roughly about where I want it. And just like when we dimension the sides, I can dimension where this point is. I click on dimension, I click on this point, and if I go to this edge right here, I can type in a number. I want that to be 20 millimeters in from the edge. Now I know it's 20 millimeters this way, but I also want it 20 millimeters this way. So I'm gonna dimension again from that point, but this time I'm gonna dimension from that edge. Click there, and Type in 20 and enter. Now I've got that point exactly where I want it. Perfect. Let's finish that sketch. Okay, now that I've got my point exactly where I want the hole, I can go in and I can use my hole command. So I'm going to go up here, left click on the hole command. It remembers the points, and otherwise I may have to click on that point. And it brings up this menu with some options. There's some choices here for holes. We'll talk more about those later. Uh, we can talk about the seat. So do I want to have uh, a countersink uh, or do I want to have a tapered countersink? Let's go with a tapered countersink. And let's go with some sizes. So right here on the top, I want the outer diameter to be 20 millimeters. So I've got, that's how big around the countersink is and change that angle. We're going to leave that at 90 degrees. And the diameter of the actual rest of the hole, let's make that 10 millimeters. So you'll notice here, let me just zoom around, scroll around a little bit so you can see it better. I've got a hole with a countersink. Now if you're paying attention, you realize I've also got a problem. Let's get out of the free orbit. It automatically drilled all the way through everything. Now, it all depending where your settings are, you sometimes have to change that. We've got a lot of different choices here. Do we want it to just drill in a certain distance? Do we want to go through all like we did with the other one? Or do we want to go to the next face? Now, in this case, I want the part to go all the way through. So I'm going to go to the next, or to a certain surface. Got a problem? It wants to know. What face do I want to end my hole at? So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag. I'm going to rotate this until I get to the underside of that face. Okay, so when I'm going to click, select that surface, I'm going to get out of the free orbit command. I'm going to select that. And you'll notice it does the hole all the way to that surface. Now there's also some options there for creating the you know, tip of a hole if you weren't going all the way through. That's We're not worrying about that right now. And I'm going to hit OK because I'm happy with where that hole is. Click the Home button. I now have a countersunk hole. All right, let's zoom out on the whole thing. So what happens if you realized you have to change a size? Either design has changed or you made a mistake on something. The nice thing about Inventor is you can go in and you can change those dimensions and it'll update the part for you. You need to know where that dimension originally was so you know where to change it. So if I want to change the height of this part right here, 
I realize I made it a little bit too tall. Now I know that this face right here was drawn, that was my original extrusion. So if I go over here to the browser window, if I click the plus on the extrusion, I can see that original sketch. So anytime you create a sketch and then you do something with it, it attaches that sketch to that action. For instance, it attached that first sketch into our extrusion, and then the program says, hey, you're done with this sketch, let's get it out of the way and let's hide it. It's still there, but it's hidden. If you look over at the second extrusion where we did that hole, there's a sketch hiding in there too where that circle is, but the program automatically hides it for us. If we want to change this height, let's go in, let's double click on that sketch, and notice how it brings us back into editing that sketch. You can see we're in the sketch tab right here. The finish sketch button has popped up, so it means I'm in a sketch window. And in fact, you can see this is highlighted. I'm inside sketch number one. So if I want to change one of these numbers, I can actually click on it and change it. So this one, I had a height of 100, but in reality, I was supposed to put a height of 80. So let me double click on that number. Instead of it, I can delete that 100, type in an 80. Now remember, I don't have to type the millimeters in. This is automatically going to work in millimeters. If I hit enter, it updates the sketch and automatically shrinks it shorter. Now watch what happens when I hit the finish sketch. It's going to automatically update the 3D part to make it fit that dimension. Click the finish sketch button, and you'll notice how this part automatically shortened to the correct size. So you can go in and you can edit most of, uh, of those items. You can edit an extrusion width. You can extend, edit the uh, size of a hole by going into the sketch. Lots of things where you can go in and you can adjust. Now that is your first basic part.